Hello students, today we are going to learn the design and drawing of trapezoidal notch fold which is included in the design of hydraulic structures module 3 of BTEC Civil Engineering of APJ Abdul Kalam Technological University. First of all, let us see what a canal fold is. A canal fold is a solid masonry structure which is constructed on the canal if the natural ground slope available is steeper than the design channel bed slope. That is, at the site of uh, canal construction if the natural ground slope is steeper then we have to convert that natural ground slope to the designed bed slope of the channel for this purpose canal faults are used and trapezoidal notch canal fault is a type of canal fault and if the difference in slope is smaller a single fault can be constructed and if it is higher then faults are constructed at regular suitable intervals now in a trapezoidal notch canal fault a crest wall is built across the channel and Trapezoidal notches are provided on that wall and water will be flowing through this trapezoidal notches to the downstream side. And the trapezoidal folds are very economical and suitable for low discharges. Here a 3D animated image of a trapezoidal canal fall is shown. This is the actual width of the canal at the upstream side and that width is flumed to accommodate the trapezoidal notch fall. This is a notch fall structure and this is known as the crest ward or it is also known as a notch pier and this on this notch pier this trapezoidal notches are provided and water will be flowing through this notches to the downstream side this is a sill of the trapezoidal notch this portion this and this now this is a upstream wing wall this is the abutment abutment will be coming at the location of the fall and this is a downstream wing wall now this is the downstream return wall as in the case of the aqueduct that we have designed earlier the actual section of the canal is flumed to accommodate this trapezoidal notch fall structure that is for the case of economy because otherwise we, have, we may have to construct a crust wall for the entire longer section so this will be more economical that's why we are fluming the canal to a smaller width now this is the upstream left embankment this is the right embankment this is the downstream embankment now we will be providing uh, side protection and also bed protection as in the case of aqueduct now let us move on in this figure the front elevation and longitudinal section of a trapezoidal notch fall is shown this is a notch pier of the trapezoidal notch fall where the trapezoidal notches will be provided and the pier will be of rectangular cross section below that there will be a sill sill stone and below that there will be a drop wall which is of trapezoidal cross section and below the drop wall there will be a cistern floor that will be of reinforced concrete and on the upstream side and downstream side we can see the bed pitching that is for bed protection and in the front elevation we can see the notches provided on the notch pier of the trapezoidal notch fall. Now in this figure an actual trapezoidal notch fall is shown. We can see these are the trapezoidal notches. Here we can see four notches are provided and these are the notch piers and this will be the abutments on the right side and uh, left side and right side and sometimes a bridge is also provided on top of the fall for transportation purposes. And here we can see this will be the downstream wing wall, this will be the apartment and this will be the downstream return wall. Now let us move on to the question, design a trapezoidal canal fall for the following data. Here we can see the hydraulic particulars of the canal above and below the drop is given. These are the values, full supply discharge, bed width, bed level. So bed level will be different on the upstream and downstream side and as there will be a drop of Two meters and full supply level that will be also different on the upstream and downstream side now the details are given we have to design the entire structure and draw the half sectional plan at the foundation level half sectional elevation and longitudinal section that is a cross section through the center line of the drop wall drop wall now these are the components to be designed in the design of a trapezoidal canal fold. First one is the dimensions of trapezoidal notch that is we have to find out the top width, bottom width and the side angle of the trapezoidal notch. Now length of drop wall between the abutments that is a flumed width of the trapezoidal notch structure. Now profile of drop wall that is this trapezoid, this 
section of trapezoid we have to design that is the top width, bottom width and height. Then there is a length of cistern, this is a cistern floor, length of cistern is from point D to this point and also its thickness we have to design. And there is notches and notch pier, notch pier is this rectangular portion we have to find out its height and width. Then there is bank connections, bank connections are A, B, C, D, E, this section, A, B is the upstream wing wall, B, C is the abutment, C, D is the downstream wing wall and D, E is the return wall or downstream return wall. Then design of protection works that is a bed protection and bank protection on upstream and downstream side. Now let us move on directly to the problem. Step 1 that is a selection of notch. We have in the question full supply discharge is 4 cumex that is 4 meter cube per second. Therefore we are going to assume a provision of 2 notches that is trapezoidal in shape each carrying a discharge of 2 cumex. And it is based on the condition that the discharge per notch should be between 2 to 3 cumex. That is here 4 cumex is the given discharge so we, can, we have to provide at least 2 notches. So for example if the full supply discharge is 6 we, we will have to provide three notches so that the discharge per notch will be two cumex. So the discharge per notch should be between two to three cumex. Now step two is uh, finding out the dimensions of notch. For that this is the equation that is q is equal to 2.99 cd d rise to 3 by 2 into l plus 0 0.8 tan alpha d. This is the equation. It is found out by using the discharge through a trapezoidal uh, for a trapezoidal notch that is we will be finding out by considering the trapezoid as two portions that is a rectangle and a triangle and this triangle will be the combined triangle from the sides of the trapezoid. So finally we will be getting this equation and CD is a coefficient of discharge that is usually taken as 0 0.7 and small d is the full supply depth on the upstream side and L is the base width of the notch. In step 2, we are considering two cases. Case 1 is a full supply discharge case. Here, we will be considering the discharge through one notch only. For the entire canal, the full supply discharge is 4 cumex. Therefore, through one notch, the full supply discharge will be 2 cumex. So, substitute the values in this equation. Cd is 0 0.7. D is a full supply depth that is 1.5. So, have two unknowns here. L, that is the bottom width of the trapezoid and alpha as the side angle. So, case 2 will be half supply discharge. Here, half supply discharge through the entire canal is 2 cumex. Therefore, through one notch, it will be 1 cumex. Therefore, substituting the values again, we will be getting equation 2 here. Cd is again 0 0.7 and small d, small d is a half supply depth. It is given in the question as 1 meters. Therefore, by solving equation 1 and 2, you will be getting the values of bottom width L and alpha. From that, you can find out the top width through by this equation that is bottom width plus 2ny. Here there is a correction, this is not 5.71, it is a 6, alpha is equal to 6 that we have found out, therefore t is equal to 0 0.715. Now we will be showing it in the figure, that is the dimensions of trapezoidal notch, that is top width is 0 0.715, we have found out, then top width, that is a 0 0.715, then bottom width is 40 centimeters, height is 1.5, that is a full supply depth. The height of the trapezoid will be equal to the full supply depth and also this is a side angle we have designed that is 6. Now the reduced level of top of the notch that is a full supply level 11.5 meter, meters that is given in the question and bottom level that is also known as sill level that is the bottom of the trapezoidal notch is known as sill. So sill level will be equal to the bed level of the upstream side that is equal to 10 meters that is also given in the question. Now step 2 is the design of drop wall that is in this figure this hatched portion this trapezoid is a not uh, is a drop wall we have to design its top width bottom width height etc. So first we are going to find out the length of the drop wall that is this length. So for that we have a condition the length should be greater than or equal to 7 by 8 of the upstream canal width also it should be less than the downstream canal width for by that condition 7 by 8 of upstream canal width upstream canal width, width is given as 6 meters in the question so you will be getting a value 5.25 and it is also less than the 
downstream canal width that is 6 so we will be taking 5.25 as the length of the drop wall now here a note is given if the length of the drop wall is greater than downstream bed width adopt the length of the downstream bed width e itself here we got the value which is that is less than the downstream bed width so it is okay here and if the length of drop wall is greater than downstream bed width take it as equal to the downstream bed width now this is the uh, elevation of the notch pier which is the trapezoidal two notches are provided here and we will be providing a gap between it that is x and at the sides we will be providing a gap of x by 2 and this is the entire length so now we have to find out this x next is we are going to find out the spacing between the notches that is x is equal to total length of the drop hole that is 5.25 minus 2 into that is 2 notches 2 into 0 0.715 divided by 2 that is equal to 1.91 will be the value of x that is the gap width between the two trapezoidal notches and at the end we are providing a width of half of x that is 1.91 by 2 that is 0 0.955 will be the distance from the abutment to the first trapezoidal notch now next is thickness of drop wall at the top that is a thickness that is given by b is equal to d by 2 plus 0 0.15 to d by 2 plus 0 0.3 that is the range of the value of b d is the full supply depth that is 1.5 which is given in the question therefore you will be getting b is equal to 1.5 by 2 that is 0 0.75 plus 1, 0 0.15 that is 0 0.9 similarly 0 0.75 plus 3 uh, 0 0.3 that is equal to 1.05 so the value of thickness of drop wall should be in the given range therefore we are selecting b is equal to 1 meters okay we are going to find out the height of the drop wall for that first we have to find out this value of x that x is the depth of the water cushion that is the water between the bed and uh, downstream bed level this is downstream bed level and the top of the cistern floor so first we are going to find out x for that we have an equation d1 plus x is equal to 0 0.9 dc into root of h where d1 is full supply depth of channel at the downstream side and dc is the full supply depth at upstream side both are same equal to 1.5 meters now small h small h is the uh, head causing flow or that is depth of drop which is given in the question or you can find it out by subtracting the full supply level at the upstream side minus full supply level at the downstream side so that is equal to 2 meters so you will be getting by substituting it the values in the equation you will be getting x as 0 0.409 we got the value of x as 0 0.409 in the previous step so we are rounding it off to 40 centimeters therefore depth of water cushion is 40 centimeters next is downstream bed level is given as 8 meters from that we can find out the top level of solid apron or the top level of the cistern floor both are same that is 8 minus 0 0.4 that is 7.6 meters Next height of drop wall h is equal to upstream canal bed level minus top level of solid apron. There is a gap between upstream canal bed and top of solid apron or cistern floor that is 10 minus 7.6. Therefore h is equal to 2.4 meters. Next is base width of drop wall. For that we have an equation h plus d by root of 5. That is h is 2.4 that is height then height of drop wall d is the full supply depth then alpha sorry phi is the specific gravity of the material of construction of the drop wall for we are taking it as 2.254 masonry so you will be getting the base width of the drop wall as 2.6 meters now this is the figure we have defined the base width of the drop wall top width of the drop wall and also the height of the drop wall that is 2.4 this is the solid apron or cistern floor we have found out the value of x now also next we have to find out the length of the system and also we have found out the level of the top of the system floor that is 7.6 that is downstream bed level this is the downstream bed level 8 minus x that is this level is 7.6 meters now step 3 is the design of water cushion system so now we are going to design this floor we have to find out this length and this thickness that is 
first a length of floor from toe of drop wall that is we have to find out this length that is from this toe of drop wall to end of the cistern floor for that length that length is denoted as lc lc is equal to 2 into dc plus 2 into root of dc into h for DC, here DC is the depth of water flowing over the drop, that is 1.5 meters, that is the full supply depth itself. Then small h is the drop or height of the drop, that is upstream FSL minus downstream FSL. By substituting these values, you can get LC is equal to 4.964 meters, so round it off to 5 meters. Now, next is, we have to find out the entire length of this floor for that we know from here to here it is 5 and from here to this point it is 2.6 that is the bottom width of the drop wall and we will be providing a projection of 0 0.3 meters here that is assume a projection of 0 0.3 meters on the upstream end of the apron or the cistern so total length of the solid apron below the drop wall will be 0 0.3 plus 2.6 plus 5 meters that is 7.9 meters that is from here to here the length will be 7.9 meters in this step we are designing the thickness of the floor of the cistern it is designed based on Bly's theory first of all the thickness of the solid apron should be sufficient to resist the uplift that is uh, the uplift will be caused or uh, the reason for uplift will be the seepage of water below this cistern floor so the cistern floor will be able to resist the uplift force due to seepage the maximum uplift occurs at the toe of the top wall, that is at this point D. Maximum uplift occurs here. Now, minimum thickness to be provided to withstand the impact of falling water. For that, we have an equation half of root of H plus D, where D is the full supply depth, that is 1.5, and H is the head causing flow, that is upstream full supply level minus downstream full supply level, that is equal to 2 meters. And from that, the minimum thickness to be provided is 0 0.94. Now, in the next step, we are going to assume the thickness of the apron as 1 meters and the hydraulic gradient of 1 in 4. Sometimes the hydraulic gradient will be given in the question. Then you take that value. Here it is not given, so you are assuming it as 1 in 4. Now, the total length of creep up to point D, that is length of creep up to point D, that is AB plus BC plus CD. That is AB is height of the drop wall, that is 2.4 meters. Then BC, BC is the thickness of the floor that we have assumed that is 1 meter. Then CD, CD is this projection 0 0.3 meters plus width of the drop wall or bottom width of the drop wall that is 2.6. Therefore, you will be getting the total length of creep of 6.3 meters. Now, head lost between A and D, that is head lost from A to D that you can be, you can find out by the, uh, multiplying with the hydraulic gradient that is 6.3 into 1 by 4. Therefore, you will be getting head lost as 1.6. Therefore, residual head at D is equal to total head that is 2 minus 1.6 that is 0 0.4 meters. Now, from this residual head, you can find out the thickness required at point D using Bly's equation. <coughs> that is HD by G minus 1. HD is the residual head. G is the specific gravity of material that is 2.25. You will be getting thickness required at point D is 0 0.35 meters so at point D you need 0 0.35 thickness only but minimum thickness to be provided to withstand the impact of falling water that is 0 0.94 so the value should be at least 0 0.94 or greater now we have assumed the value was 1 meter therefore the value that we have assumed is safe hence the thickness of 1 meter should be provided for the entire length of the floor that is entire length of the floor is from here to here that is 7.9 meters now step 4 is the design of notch and notch pier the sill of the notches should be at the bed level that is sill means the bottom of the trapezoidal notch that should be aligned with the bed level of the upstream canal and the two notches are arranged in the notch pier over the drop wall and the arrangement that we have designed earlier, there is a gap width of the gap width between the two notches. Now, sill of the notch should be at the upstream canal bed level that is given in the question 10 meters. Now, top level of notch, top level of notch pier that should be aligned with the full supply level of the canal that is also given in the question. Next is width of the notch pier. 
that should be equal to f of 3 by 2 that is the full supply depth by 2 that is 1.5 by 2 that is equal to 0 0.75 but a minimum width of 0 0.85 should be provided for the notch pier hence provide 0 0.85 meter width for the notch pier that is if this value f of 3 by 2 is greater than 0 0.85 Take that value since it is less than 0 0.85 which is a minimum requirement for the width of notch pier. Take that value of the width of the notch pier. Now this is a plan of the notch that is provided on the notch pier. This is the width of the notch pier that is the top view. This is the width of the notch pier and this is the width, top width of the drop wall that is 1 meters and width of notch pier is we have defined it as 85 centimeters or 0 0.85 meters so this is 85 this is 1 meter so this gap will be 15 centimeters now this stone or this portion this is actually the width of the or total length of the trapezoidal notch and this is known as a spreader stone a spreader stone is provided at the end of the trapezoidal notch to deflect the falling water step 5 is the design of protection box in this we are going to design these sections from a b c d to e so first we are going to design the abutment b c that is length of abutment is equal to base width of the drop wall that is this width should be the base width of the drop wall that is 2.6 meters we have designed earlier then two put, uh, top width of abutment is assumed as 0 0.5 meters we are taking it as 0 0.5 meters then top level of abutment that is the top of top level of abutment should be aligned with the top of the upstream bank that is equal to 12.5 meters it is also given in the question then bottom level of abutment that is the foundation of the drop wall top, bottom level of the abutment should be equal to the foundation of the drop wall that also we have found out the level as 7.6 now height of the abutment should be taken as height of the abutment that you can obtain it by subtracting the top minus bottom that is 12.5 minus 7.6 that is 4.9 that is equal to h dash now base width base width of the abutment is 0 0.4 into h dash that is 0 0.4 into 4.9 so you'll be getting the value of 2 that is this is section of abutment this is the base width 2 meters and this is the top of the foundation level that is 7.6 now next is the upstream wing wall AB so we are going to design the this wall the section of this wall we will be providing a splay that is the this angle will be or this slope will be 1 in 1 therefore top with this we are taking it the same as abutment that is 0.5 meters next is top level of the wing wall should be equal to top bank level of upstream canal or that is the top of the bank of upstream canal it is given in the question as 12.5 that is the top of upstream bank same as the top of upstream bank that is 12.5 then bottom level is the level for good soil that is bottom level should be equal to the good soil for foundation level that is given in the question as 8.5 so the bottom level of upstream wing wall should be equal to the good soil level given in the question that is 
which is height of wing wall that is top minus bottom we will be getting it as 4 meters and bottom width will be 0.4 into this value that is 0.4 into 4 that is 1.6 meters and also provide a foundation concrete of 60 centimeters that is for both section of abutment and section of wing wall that is 60 centimeter is the thickness of this foundation 60 and this is also 60 therefore this is level is 7.60 sorry uh, for the abutment there is a slight change for the abutment this thickness will be equal to the thickness of the cistern that is 1 meter therefore 7.6 minus 1 6.6 .6. for the upstream wing wall we have taken the foundation concrete as 60 centimeter thick therefore 8.5 minus 0 0.6 that is 7.9 will be the bottom level of the abutment and the bottom width of the abutment we have designed it as we have taken it as 2.2 that is based on 0.3 meter projection on both sides here 0.3 here also 0.3 that is 1.6 plus 0.3 plus 0.3 that is 2.2 meters and these values in this uh, as we can see in the step 5 for the protection works always take in any question always take the width of abutment as 0.5 then length of abutment will be equal to the base width of the drop wall that you have designed earlier then top level of the abutment will be always equal to the top of upstream bank in any question that is that value will not change then bottom level of bottom level will be equal to the foundation of drop wall that is also always same so from step 5 onwards most of the things will be same for any question so keep that in mind and all the sections that is b c a b then c d e d etc are designed in a similar manner so you can just learn one and you can do all the sections now for the downstream wing wall c d you can see it is sloping from c to d so section at c is equal to section of abutment here it will be the section of abutment but foundation concrete is 60 uh, 60 centimeter thick that is from at c the section will be 60 centimeter thick and foundation foundation will be 60 centimeter thick and the section will be same as the section of the abutment now at d the top width is again taken as 0 0.5 top level at d is equal to top of bank level at downstream side that is given in the question 10.5 then bottom level is top of water cushion that is top of water cushion that is 7.6 now height is equal to top minus bottom that is 2.9 again base width is equal to 0.4 into 2.9 that is 1.16 take it as 1.2 also provide a 60 centimeter thick foundation concrete so that is for section D this is a section D this is the base width 1.2 1.2 plus 2 end projections 0.3 plus 0.3 that is 1.8 and level is same as the level of top level of water cushion so 60 centimeter thick concrete is provided therefore 7.6 minus 67 therefore 7 meters will be the bottom of foundation at section D and top of the section at D will be the top of the bank or the embankment at the downstream side that is given in the question 10.5 now next is downstream return wall that is section at E will be same as the section at D so for this portion we will be following this same section only now step 6 is the design of bed protection box that is the revetments and pitchings pitching means that is the protection provided on the bed floor and revetment is usually the protection provided on the sides of the trapezoid now these are all same for every question as we can see upstream side revetment and apron the length of the revetment is 3 into h1 where h1 is the full supply depth that is 1.5 or a minimum of 3 therefore 3 into 1.5 that is equal to 4.5 meters then length of the revetment that is 4.5 meters from the top wall towards the upstream side that is the length of the revetment to be provided next is length of bed pitching that is half of length of the revetment that is half of 4.5 that is 2.25 meters and for downstream revetment and apron length of revetment will be equal to 4 into h1 plus d where h1 is the full supply depth at the downstream side that is 1.5 and d is the 
drop or depth of drop that is 2 meters so there's a problem from here on we are going to discuss how to draw the or how to prepare the drawing for the designed trapezoidal notch pole we have to prepare these three drawings half section plan at the foundation level section through the center line of canal and section through the center line of drop wall now this is a half sectional plan at the foundation level this is the animated figure as we can see up to the center line of the canal from the right side we are seeing the actual plan and from this point to the left we are seeing the plan at the foundation level only so this is a notch that is we can see the curved trapezoidal notch and this is the upstream wing wall this is the abutment then downstream wing wall and these are the and uh, this figure will give you an actual view of the designed structure also for further detailing you can see the video uh, videos or you can go to the video links given in the description of the video now next is section through the center line of canal and this is a section through the center line of the canal that is a longitudinal section as we can see this is a notch pier it's a drop wall cistern floor this is the revetment bed ditching this is a uh, water cushion then this is again bed ditching on upstream side this is a revetment on upstream side so this is upstream bank this is a downstream bank etc and notches will be coming here okay these are the drawings to be prepared for the design that we have done that is there should be a plan that is half sectional plan at the foundation level that means this is the center line of the canal and below this line there should be a full plan and beyond this above this line the plan should be at the foundation level and this is a longitudinal section that is along the center line of the canal and this is the lateral section or the section through the drop or section through the body wall this is a half sectional plan at the foundation level that you have to prepare first here as we can see this is this x x is the section along the center line of the canal so below that we have shown the actual plan and above that the plan at the foundation level is shown so that is the first thing you have to draw that is a half sectional plan at the foundation level then second one was section along the center line of the canal that is section xx and third one was section along the center line of the drop wall that is section yy so x section xx and section yy are shown in the next slide now here let us see here a dimension of 3 meters is shown that means as we know this is the center line of the canal so total width of the canal is 6 meters so from one side to the center line it is 3 meters then this is the slide sides of the trapezoid and its slope is given in the question is 1.1 now this portion is known as berm that is the horizontal portion after the canal that is the horizontal portion between the canal and the embankment that is known as berm between these two lines now next is this is the top of the embankment its level is 12.5 that is given in the question also its width is 2 meters and the side slope of the embankment at the upstream side is 1.5 is to 1 that is at this side and this is the inner side and this is the outer side of the embankment now let us move on to the uh, structure this is the upstream wing wall abutment downstream wing wall and downstream return wall this triangular portion is the upstream revetment that its length is 4.5 meters and this portion this is the upstream bed protection that is 2.25 meters now at the on the plan at the foundation level this is the upstream wing wall that is foundation of the upstream wing wall its bottom width is to uh, that is the foundation width is to uh, 2.2 meters then base width of the trapezoidal section that is 1.6 and top width is 0.5 similarly this uh, here will be the abutment and its section is shown in shown here now as we can see uh, some of you some of you may have already noticed that in the previous figure the section of abutment then upstream wall downstream wall etc was a proper trapezoid here in this figure one side of the trapezoid is 
is a right triangle so you can draw it in either fashion and as you can see for section a a that is a down uh, upstream wing wall the vertical side the vertical side will be having that is a covered side or here there will be soil that is exposed side will be the slanting side and the other side may or may not be vertical so you can use either design that is either you can provide a slanting side or the inner side or you can see the uh, provide a vertical side similarly for section bb and abutment you can draw it in either way now these sections are shown here next is this is the this one meter that is the top width of the drop wall then 2.6 is the bottom width of the drop wall 0.85 is the top width of the notch pier now this is a trapezoidal notch showing this is the uh, spreader stone please note that here or write it here while you prepare your drawing this is a spreader stone this entire thing is a notch now this is a water cushion region and its level is 7.6 that is a top of the cistern floor that is 7.6 now this is a downstream bed protection 7 meters downstream revetment 14 meters downstream bed level 8.5 now here these are the side slope of the trapezoidal section sorry side slope of the uh, trapezoidal section now this is the top of the bank level at the downstream side sorry this is not top of the bank this is the ground level at the upstream side it is 10.5 so and this is a downstream embankment and this is the ground level at the this is the top of the downstream embankment with the width of 1 meters I think there is a correction in this region. If in the question it is given as 2 meters, please correct it as 2 meters. Then let us move on to the section and section XX and section Y. As you can see, this is a longitudinal section XX. This is the upstream revetment. This is the upstream bed pitching. Notch pier, drop wall, top top width, bottom width, fill stone or spreader stone. Then this is a cistern and its thickness. This is the length of cistern, five meters. Reduced level of cistern, top level, bottom level. This is a downstream bed pitching, downstream revetment. Then the top of bank at the downstream side that is 10.5 now this is a half sectional elevation that is yy here this is a, this figure shows on the left side that is a front view from the downstream side and the right side this portion shows a section so that is very easy to draw let us see here this is a trapezoidal notch with the bottom width of 0.4 and a top width of 0.715 this is a gap width that is a descent that is 1.9 and half of that is provided at the sides this is the top width of the abutment then this is the top of bank level 12.5 Now these are the dimensions of the trapezoidal notch. Simply show that on one side if it is soft. And this is a side angle. And by that we are concluding the design of trapezoidal, trapezoidal notch fold. Thank you.